This video is going to be about the worst person to ever be part of the CSGO scene. I've put off making this video for a long time because some of the topics in it are quite difficult to talk about, but it's time I actually addressed it. This is a story of the most prolific scammer in the history of the scene and how he ripped off this community time and time again, and the cataclysmic mess that unfolded in 2018 when he was finally brought down. I call this man Dracula, and while you may have heard of his involvement in CSGO Wild on my channel in the past, CSGO Wild was the tip of the iceberg, and the full extent of his crimes is much, much worse. And in this video, I'm going to be telling the full story, from its shady beginning to its calamitous end. Now, this video is sponsored by Skinport. Skinport is the easy to use skins marketplace where you can sell your skins for real cash. It has over 400,000 skins on it, so I'm sure you'll find something you like on here. And if you do, there are no hidden fees for the buyer. What you see is what you'll pay. And on top of that, the skins here are miles cheaper than they are on the Steam market, up to 30% cheaper. Now, if you're a seller, Skinport will pay directly in your local currency. It is also extremely highly rated on Trustpilot with 4.9 out of 5 stars. It also comes with high definition skin inspect features so you can see exactly what you're getting before you buy. And it's got a skins database too. That is a thing. If you like skins, this may interest you. It is safe, secure, and easy to use. Check it out. Link is in the description. Dracula, in many respects, was a pioneer in CSGO. His first project was called Kickback.com, and it was launched in October 2014. And in a lot of respects, it was ahead of its time. It was one of the first ever businesses to be set up around CSGO skins. And from what I can tell, it was also a dysfunctional mess with a fatal problem that even a 12-year-old could see from a mile away. Basically, Kickback.com allowed people to wager a currency called rubies on 1v1s against other players. And those rubies could then be used to withdraw skins, which would be a great concept, except Dracula decided he didn't need to bother with a anti-cheat. So the result was a shit show completely overrun with cheaters whenever there was more than 50 cents on the line. And this is before he started scamming people. You see, at some point along the line, Dracula disabled withdrawals on the site, apparently just leaving it running with no way of withdrawing for years. There is thread after thread after thread after thread complaining about it. If you deposit it on the site, basically you just took your money and left you with a plate of shit. Oh, and to wrap up the exit scam, in 2018, he just completely shut the site down and replaced it with this dead web page. But as you're going to see, this sort of behavior is going to be a pattern with Dracula. In fact, it would show up again with his next project, CSGO Wild. So my brain, like I just, look, we got to finesse it. We got to figure out how to make the money to buy this team now. So we create this website and um, through our rake and all this shit, um, we were making like $200,000 a day. That was Faze Banks, a man whose critical thinking abilities are roughly on par with a plank of wood, boasting about how they funded their CSGO team by getting their child fans to gamble on a website called CSGO Wild. Now, because what they'd done was, you know, illegal, Faze quickly ran around talking to journalists trying to convince them that Faze Banks had simply misspoken when he carefully explained in detail how they set up and operated CSGO Wild from the island of Antigua. You know, <laughs> slip of the tongue, these things happen, but in the process, an interesting detail was revealed to one of the people they spoke to. But they uh, ultimately, the one thing that I sort of was a little bit convinced about was that they weren't 100% in the driving seat on this. It sounded like it was a group of partners uh, that came together to run a site. And basically, I, I think there was one guy at the top, a very sinister piece of shit, that pocketed most of the money and a guy that I've got a pretty thick dossier on. Richard is talking about Dracula here, and the truth is, Cisco Wild was never truly Faze's site. It was Dracula's, and it appears that Faze relied on Dracula's experience in running a site to make the project work. In fact, you can see from archival videos that the site was actually using kickback.com's bots. It looks like it used Dracula's existing infrastructure, and it was Cisco Wild that began Dracula's crash course with infamy. Now, FaZe's affiliation with CSGO Wild finished around the end of 2015 when they purchased the CSGO team they desperately wanted. And despite the fact that that purchase was based on 12 year olds losing their skins on a gambling site, the team has become a fantastic part of the esports scene. And 
If you're a regular on my channel, you probably know how the rest of the CSGO Wild Story played out. Dracula took full control of the website, he brought in other influencers to advertise it, he probably rigged things and did all sorts of dirty shit behind the scenes, and then seven months later, when Valve sent a cease and desist to all the gambling sites, Dracula suddenly shut the site down and exit scanned all its users, mocking them with a Pepe mean in its place. What a nice guy. Now, it was probably around the same time withdrawals were disabled on kickback.com, although we don't really know for sure, but either way, the timeline here is pretty well known. But what's not so well known is that while all this was happening, Dracula had been striking up a business relationship with a man called Monarch, the owner of a rival site called CSGO Empire. Now, Monarch is an interesting character. Like all gambling site owners, he's given up his personal integrity for profits. Touching gambling is like eating the apple in the Garden of Eden. Once you've done it, you are tainted forever and there is no going back. But he does also have a knack for exposing some of the dodgiest gambling sites in the scene. And while this is somewhat self-serving behavior given these sites are his rivals, they are still legitimately terrible websites. And he's one of the few people with the technical skills and the platform to do it. Or he did until Twitter banned him anyway. But back in 2016, Monarch was just a teenager launching an ambitious gambling site, a relatively small fish in a big pond. And as he slowly built up his business, he appears to have struck a kind of non-belligerence pact with Dracula, a pact not to step on each other's toes. Now, this pact, if you're wondering, definitely did not hold. But what it did ensure is that the conflict between these two men over the next two years would be particularly nasty and bitter. Now, by August 2016, it looked like Dracula had disappeared from the scene. CSGO Wild was shut down. Kickback.com was just this zombie website stealing the skins of any kids who were dumb enough to deposit on it. But otherwise, it seemed like this blood-sucking monster had gone back to his cave. But something festered at the heart of CSGO, something the community had failed to see. But Dracula had seen it. Even, I'm sorry, that's such a cringy reference. But the point is, Dracula was not gone. In fact, he was busy launching his new skin site. It was called Skin Hub, and it would make his name go down in infamy. Now, Skin Hub was part of a new wave of dodgy skin sites that started showing up in 2016, known as case unboxing sites, and it quickly became one of the biggest in existence, advertised by a ton of creators. Shroud promoted it, Fitz promoted it, Spagasols promoted it, I Notorious promoted it. Oh, and it was also a dirty rigged shithole that stole its users' money. But hey, look, a lot of people took money from dodgy sites back in the day. And you know, as an influencer, it can be hard to tell whether a site is legit or not. And when you're being offered a six figure sum of money to advertise it, which a lot of these people were, well, you know what? Maybe you'll just take the nice Russian man's word that he's not doing anything f***ed up. But that brings me to another interesting fact about Skin Hub. They uh, weren't totally honest about its ownership. Yeah, apparently given he'd already been involved in two exit scams, Dracula figured maybe it wasn't the best idea to be the public face of the website. So instead, he invented an imaginary person called Chris who he pretended was the owner of the site. And where was Chris at? Uh, kickback.com, according to his email address. Clearly not trying to fool business partners, I guess that's where the money came into it. But anyway, the point is, the con man was back at it with another dodgy site, barely hiding its true ownership from the public and successfully getting a heap of big names to go and do his dirty work. And for almost two years, it worked. Like, like there were zero problems. And in truth, a big part of the reason for that is that there wasn't really any hard evidence against the site. I mean, if you accuse it of being rigged, as Maximilian Musk would say, you're right, but there's no evidence. But that was all going to change in December 2017, when suddenly there was a lot of evidence, and it was all Dracula's fault. You see, it was around that time that Dracula, fat on the easy profits he'd been making over the past two years, got spectacularly greedy and decided to relaunch CSGO Wild as one of the most disgustingly rigged websites in the history of the planet. Basically, there was an army of bot accounts on it which used their advanced knowledge of the provably fair system to beat actual players using it. Here is an example of a guy losing to a bot, for example, and this wouldn't have been a problem if it wasn't for the fact that Dracula designed the website 
website so you could see all of this on the client side. Monarch, who was busy sniffing around his new competitor's site, immediately noticed this and publicly called it out. And within a week, the relaunch of CSGO Wild was dead in the water. I guess they gave away all these sapphires for nothing. But of course, the investigations didn't stop here. Monarch and Dracula's other competitors knew SkinHub had the same owner, and they immediately started snooping around the site to see if anything was off. And it took them about five minutes to figure out that SkinHub's provably fair system was provably full of shit. And despite SkinHub's floundering attempts to defend themselves, it was pretty clear they'd been caught out. Now, miraculously, this did not kill the website on its own. It hurt it, but given it was the second big scandal in a row, a lot of people kind of overlooked this, and although the Skin Hub brand was definitely in the toilet at this point, it hadn't quite been flushed yet. And this led Dracula to reach his hand in to try and retrieve it. In early 2018, Valve nuked a lot of the skins gambling industry by adding a train cool down to CSGO skins. So everyone switched to a new grift. VIIL items, which went about as well as you'd expect. And Dracula decided to get SkinHub on board this new way of scamming people by changing it to a VIRL site and paying fat stacks to a bunch of YouTubers to advertise it. Yes, apparently the fact the site had been outed as a scam was no barrier between a YouTuber and a sack of cash. And I would give you a list of the people who took this money, but unfortunately, They've all taken their videos down, and you are going to see exactly why as we get into the final part of the video. By October 2018, SkinHub was humming along beautifully, and by humming along beautifully, I mean it was making fat stacks from the miners who were using it. Quite an achievement from a site that had been exposed as a fraud, but with so much dirt on the record, it was only a matter of time before someone decided it needed to be exposed. And that someone was a YouTuber known as Bean. Bean had been a gambling YouTuber back in the day, but at this point he was moving on and decided on the way he was going to take a shot at SkinHub, which I don't think needs any further justification. The site deserves to be exposed and he deserves credit for doing it. So he released a seven minute video running through Dracula's many scams, expressing dismay at the fact that SkinHub was still operating and also highlighting that the prices on SkinHub were an absolute rort. Another thing I haven't mentioned is that all the items on SkinHub are so f ridiculously overpriced. It's actually ridiculous. Take a look at these Yeezy 350 cream whites. They're $450 on SkinHub. If I head over to Goat, which is a site where you can buy sneakers on, they're $270. SkinHub is literally overcharging by 73% for these shoes. Now, the original video got 650,000 views in its first week, and it caused utter pandemonium. And what happened next is a bit complicated and bits of the record are now missing, so I'll start by saying this. Bean's video went down after it was copyright claimed by two different networks, meaning at least two different YouTubers, presumably both people who've shown advertising SkinHub in the video, tried to shut it down. Bean re-uploaded it with this stuff edited out, but then his account was viewbotted and then deleted for terms of service violations. And as you can imagine, this caused quite a bit of drama. Every single YouTuber SkinHub was sponsoring was cutting ties and running at this point, but one of them, Anomaly, made a pretty serious f up when he had his network put in one of the two claims made on Bean's video and then used that to block it. I have no doubt he was in a blind panic at the time, but this was still a terrible mistake because all it did was draw attention to him. And although Anomaly came clean about it and lifted the claim, when Bean's channel went down, the fingers got pointed at him. Now, Anomaly denied responsibility for this and claimed that he can't just randomly get a channel taken down. And he's telling the truth here. YouTubers do not have the ability to just delete smaller channels because they don't like them. And don't take that from me, take it from Moist Critical. I can say with a high level of certainty that there is not a single YouTube creator, not T-Series, not PewDiePie, that can go to YouTube and tell them how to enforce rules on their platform. They don't take any of that seriously. There is nobody that can go to YouTube and say, I want action taken against this and that. And I can say that with confidence because with our company, Human Media Group, we actually have a direct line to YouTube now. And one thing I've learned is they don't give a f 
what a creator says to them. Instead, it's a lot more likely that the ban was a result of Bean being viewbotted and then mass reported, and the man behind that was almost certainly Dracula. Also, as for the claim from Fullscreen, we still don't know which YouTuber was responsible for it, but as far as I'm aware, it was never lifted. But with Bean's channel downfall account, Dracula moved on to his next target, Monarch. After initially exposing Skin Hub at the start of 2018, Monarch and Dracula had been in a state of Cold War, with Dracula apparently attempting to DDoS and hack Monarch. Monarch meanwhile had been covertly spreading dirt about Skin Hub behind the scenes, and once Bean's video came out, he immediately signal boosted it. So Dracula did the logical thing and set up a stream where he docks Monarch and his entire family and spent ages going through the internet post Monarch made as a 13 year old. Now, this might give you the impression that Dracula was winning, but in reality, this was more like a wounded animal thrashing around on the ground. Skin Hub had survived one scandal, but this second one had killed it. His advertisers had ditched. Other people were making videos. Jake Lucky was making videos. Sparkles was making a video. The public knew it was a scam. Interestingly, Sparkles claimed Anomaly was kept in the dark about Skin Hub, by the way. But sometimes when people offer you a lot of money and you have absolutely no idea that it may potentially not be legit and you're kept in the dark about certain, I know he has been kept in the dark about certain issues, etc. Then you can't, it's not really that much that he can do. Thought I'd mention that. And despite Monarch implying that a hitman might be after him, the truth is, his campaign to take down Skin Hub had ended in success. Dracula was finished running gambling sites. His former business associate had bitten the dust. Now, I will say, Monarch definitely spread some misinformation himself during this whole scandal, including some pretty scandalous allegations about Anomaly that I don't think are even remotely believable and I'm not even going to show. I do feel pretty sorry for Bean though. He stood up for what was right and he paid a pretty terrible price. I know on a personal level he had a terrible 2018 even without this drama and having his channel taken down must have been awful. This man took a hit for the community. Skin Hub still hung around as a zombie website for about a year, devouring the money of anybody dumb enough to use it, but its days of stealing millions from the public were over and with it, one of CSGO's darkest sagas was at an end. But while Dracula might have gone back to his cave for now, the one thing that is for sure is that if monsters like him smell blood again, they will come running back to this game. I hope this is the worst gambling scandal I ever have to talk about in CSGO, but truth be told, I'm not so confident about that.